Hi gang, I don't know about you, but it feels like the Horus Heresy has been languishing for the last few years. There's been a bit of hype and leaked images around a potential re-release or new starter set or something, but when they came out, one of those popular questions asked was, what rule set will it use? Will it stick with 7th edition or update in line with modern 40k? But thing is, there is a fan-made supplement out there for running Horus Heresy games with modern 40k rules, and in this video I'm going to talk about how that came about, because I was one of the people who wrote it. Cast your mind back into the mists of time. So 7th edition 40k, yeah, I'm sorry, I don't want to traumatize anyone here, but it is necessary. 7th edition 40k was active between 2014 and 2017 and was one of the most complicated and spread out rule sets 40k has ever seen. The game had bloated in complexity since its last complete reboot back in 3rd edition, with the previous edition, 6th, seeing the introduction of flyers and super heavies into regular games of 40k, and 7th, continued the trend with numerous online-only data sheets, the introduction of campaign books that rewrote or added loads of new units to codices, the much-hated formations, which essentially gave you bonus rules or loads of models for free if you spent loads of money, sorry, chose the right units, and finally with Decurion detachments, where choosing the right combination of those formations granted you even more free stuff and extra rules. It was really complicated, even just building an army was complicated, and the rules were spread out all all over the place. And if you think 9th edition is going the same way, well in 7th edition the core rules of the game were about 200 pages long. Instead of what, like 10? Anyway, it was a massive complicated mess of a game with tons of loopholes to abuse in competitive play, so where did the casual or narrative gamers turn? Well, often, heresy. The Horus Heresy setting had been around since 6th edition. Horus Heresy Betrayal, the first Horus Heresy rulebook, was released by Forge World in 2012. And it weathered the transition to 7th edition quite well, mostly because all the bells and whistles 7th edition added just didn't apply. Horus Heresy was written as an expansion to the 40k game, using whatever was the current edition of 40k as the base rules, but then replacing the army lists, missions, and force organization charts with heresy versions. As such, all those formations and data sheets and decurion detachments from 7th edition were just ignored. At the time, this was a really good blend. You could still play the 40k game that you already knew, were familiar with, and knew how to play, and it was an advancing and current game system, but you didn't have to put up with all the ridiculous game-breaking add-on rules that 40k was coming out with. Heresy updated itself with new books and new models pretty regularly, but not at a crazy pace. And all those rules were mostly concentrated in a couple of volumes. Really useful if you're just not interested in constantly chasing some meta game. As such, Heresy blossomed around this time, expanding to the biggest and most popular it has ever been. It was helped along by the existence of two plastic box sets, Betrayal of Kalth and The Burning of Prospero, both of which were sold as standalone box games but were used as starter sets by everybody. This was supplemented by a regular stream of Heresy content from other people, by a growing number of podcasts and narrative events. Like many people, I pretty much switched to just playing Heresy. I remember our game club regularly having way more games of Heresy than regular 40k. Heresy was billed by its own fan base as the more narrative friendly modelers game. And how true that actually was is a bit questionable. The framing of the game as a semi-historical setting meant that the scene could be a little gatekeepy as far as colour schemes or armour marks were concerned. Although I went to loads of narrative events, I remember them still having like 20% cheesy no fun arsehole armies. The people playing them were just denying it and saying their 12 phosphex rapiers were there for fluff reasons. So look, it wasn't perfect, but it was generally a way more relaxed environment than 40k had become, which was really, really nice. Anyway, by the time 8th edition 40k was announced, Heresy was huge, so the unveiling of a new system, rewritten from the ground up, caused predictably, a load of internet drama. See, a few years earlier, Warhammer Fantasy had been scrapped and replaced with Age of Sigmar and its infamous four pages of rules and no points costs. And while Age of Sigmar was at that time starting to establish itself as an interesting and complex game, there were still a few old grognards around complaining that it had been dumbed down and it was a kid's game. And Heresy, as an alternative to modern 40k, had attracted a lot of that sort of player as well. 
when the news came out that 8th edition would be a complete rewrite and would have a sleek, minimal, basic rule set, yeah, the Heresy fan base was pretty divided. Some, me included, thought that that sounded great. 7th edition Heresy was way less of a mess than 7th edition 40k, but it certainly wasn't a perfect system. The core rules were still needlessly complex and exhausting to remember, and the idea of getting to play in our favourite setting but with cool, new, slick, minimal rules seemed pretty good. On the other hand, a load of people were scared that it would be dumbed down so much that it'd be a worse game, or genuinely thought that the 7th edition system had been perfected with heresy and the only problem was in 40k. There was a fair amount of snobbishness here too. The constant idea that heresy was the true discerning adult version of 40k, and those horrible kids playing normal 40k might need their game simplifying, but you know, we didn't. That sort of thing. And this all wasn't helped by a few developments at Games Workshop at the time. All of this is hearsay really, so take it with a pinch of salt, but the story is that 8th edition was dropped on the studio really late without much in the way of announcement. And the requirement that every model in production had to have rules for 8th edition on release day meant that Forge World's timeline was thrown out the window in order to produce these index books for all of their models. In addition, around the same time, the heresy community was rocked by the tragic and sudden loss of Alan Bly. Alan Bly was the lead writer on the Horus Heresy game and had previously spearheaded other huge projects for Forge World, like the Bad Ab War. By all accounts of the people who worked with him, he was a bit of a force of nature, passionate about what he did, doing the work of a few other people and pushing the entire heresy setting forward. With his passing and the demands of the new edition, it was pretty clear heresy wouldn't switch over to 8th edition anytime time soon, which meant there was a more pressing problem. With the release of 8th edition, the main rulebook used to play heresy games, the 40k 7th edition rulebook, would be discontinued. How would people start? The result, a few months later, was the announcement of the Age of Darkness rulebook version 1, essentially the 7th edition 40k rulebook repackaged in a heresy cover and with a few little changes. And even more internet drama started over whether this was a permanent solution, heresy remains 7th edition, or a stopgap until they could find time to convert over the rules. And all this resulted with an argument on I don't know, Facebook or Daka Daka or the Heresy 30k forums or something, claiming that Heresy was way too big a project for anyone to ever switch to 8th edition and it'd take years. And then a few of us claiming that it could totally be done and furthermore, it'd be really easy actually. And with that, a small group of us got together, two of us at first and then a few more, and the 8th edition Heresy project was born. We thought we had all the ingredients, 8th edition and the index books were out, so they had half the rules in them. We were going to write an 8th edition version of the Horus Heresy. Easy. So we were trying to prove a point here that it was possible to port Heresy over to 8th edition without years of work, but we were really aware that we were trying to build something based on an entirely new rule set that, to be fair, none of us really had played that much. And also that fan rules don't tend to gain a lot of traction, especially if it looks like whoever wrote them was wishlisting or just making stuff up. So we came up with a few ground rules for how we were going to build this rule set. First, if 40k rules existed for something, those are the rules we used. No exceptions. The 40k indexes and later into this, the first 8th edition Space Marine Codex had already been released, so we knew the stats and points costs of, say, a Space Marine of a jump pack, or bolters, or las cannons, or predators. The whole benefit of Heresy in 7th edition was that it used familiar stuff from 40k, so we stuck religiously to that idea. Second, if 40k rules didn't exist for something, then use alternate 40k rules that did. For example, Breacher Shields did not have 40k rules. We knew the 40k rules for Combat Shields and Storm Shields, which were different. We also knew how Breacher Shields worked in Old Heresy, but neither of those would really do the job, so we used the All is Dust rule from 8th edition Thousand Suns. Roughly replicated a similar effect even if it was a different system, but we could at least take it straight out of an 8th edition rulebook. Similarly, World Eaters Kaidere weapons didn't exist in the 8th edition rule set, but Dark Eldar had some Gladiator style weapons that we could roughly map onto them, so we use those instead. Lastly, if none of the above worked, then yeah, make stuff up. But we were trying to bear in mind that sticking to 8th edition conventions was probably better than slavishly trying to replicate exactly how something worked in old heresy. You know, try and make the rules work in broad effect, but don't worry about the mechanics being exactly the same. It is a new edition of the game, after all. This was an obvious thing with Legion rules. As long as Imperial Fists had a bonus to bolt weapons, Emperor's Children dueled other characters, and White Scars felt really manoeuvrable, 
great. Find some way of replicating the flavor, not necessarily the mechanics. While this was happening, we were also working on the format of the rules. It helped that both the lead writers on this, myself and a guy called Griftifer, knew how to use InDesign and Photoshop. So the books looked pretty professional. Not perfect, but you know, pretty good. All in all, most of the legwork on the project, at least to get the Space Marine Legion's books out, took us about three months. And that's two people with full-time jobs doing this in their spare time. Building the units was actually the easy part. For a lot of the units, it was a case of copying over the rules from whichever book they were in and applying the conventions we'd already settled upon. And as more conventions were decided, this became a lot easier. Two difficult things which were really hard to get right were balancing the Primarchs and, as people had suspected all along, differentiating the legions. For the Primarchs, we knew what we wanted to achieve, that each of them should be around the same power level as 8th edition Guillemin. But the 8th edition trend towards simplicity was really our enemy here. My co-writer Griftifer did a load of math hammering to work out where we could push and pull stats and abilities for each of the Primarchs without overloading people. One of the general design trends in 8th edition was to try and do differences in power by changing stat lines and adding a few good abilities. Whereas in 7th edition, the trend was to just keep piling on universal special rules on top of each other. 7th edition Heresy Era Gearman had 10 universal special rules, 3 unique special rules, and four bits of war gear, each with their own special rules. 8th edition Gearman had a fraction of that. So trying to maintain those differences without just piling on loads more abilities or messing around with the stat line too much was one of the big difficulties. This was a bit similar with Legion abilities. We could always find new ways to push and pull Legions. We knew it was possible because all those chapters and Legions would be differentiated pretty well in 8th edition anyway. But a lot of the Legion traits we were used to worked on systems that had either changed massively or just weren't present in 8th edition, like affecting reserves roles or the many different ways in which legions interacted with morale. For some of these, we had to emphasize other aspects of those legions, so play more on the Sons of Horus murderous close combat affinity for knives and pistols than, say, their ability to manipulate reserves. For others, we just stole the 40k chapter traits in the name of keeping things simple, like changing Emperor's children's flawless execution to their 40k flawless perfection. Anyway, the point here is there were problems to work through, but with the aid of a load of Google documents and more collaborators coming on board, work through them we did, and I think by the end of 2017 we had a pretty functioning rule set for the legions. That's maybe four months in total of four or five of us doing a few hours work a week. That's probably a month or two's work for someone doing it full time, and bear in mind we were also the formatting and graphic design departments too. Did it catch on? Well, we originally did this on the Heresy 30k forums, and as we got further and further into it, there was so much discussion building up that they had to start some new forums to support it. We got a bit of traction elsewhere. The lovely people over at the Age of Darkness podcast invited us on to talk about the project, and there were even a few smaller games days and events that used the rule set and then fed back into the system. Over time, more and more people came on board, including the fantastic Darog, who fed back with updated points costs as many people played it and as more 8th edition codices came out. The armies were also fleshed out. We ported over rules for some of the additional super heavy units and created lists for Solar Auxilia and the Militia and Cults. That was pretty simple. We held off on Mechanicum for ages because at the time we were all still expecting there to be a release for Fires of Seraxis, a planned Imperial armor book that was gonna bring the Forge World Mechanicum units into 40k, but as that became less and less likely to ever be released, other collaborators started producing their own 8th edition Heresy Mechanicum lists. But once that initial push was complete, I must say that over time my initial enthusiasm for the project kind of waned. Partly that was because I felt like we'd kind of done the job we set out to prove we could do. Partly it was just time constraints, we had other hobby projects we wanted to do, and keeping something updated all the time is a lot of work. But it was also to do with how Heresy changed in the aftermath of those events in 2017. First, presumably because of all this disruption, there was a sudden drop off in Heresy support over the following year. The next Taurus Heresy book, Malevolence, wouldn't be released until 2019, so there was just a lot less stuff coming out to keep people engaged. But at the same time, 8th edition brought a lot of people back to 40k. Not only people who hadn't played since they were kids, but also all those heresy players like me who were looking forward to the new edition and wanted to try it out, or preferred the simplicity of the new edition and didn't want to have to keep up to date with two sets of rules. A lot of heresy gaming just stopped as people switched back to 40k. At my club, heresy went from being the dominant form of 40k played to almost totally absent in a few months. 
And while our project was intended to keep the link between modern 40k and heresy alive, in reality, all this fallout just fractured the fan base. People who wanted 8th edition had moved back to 40k, which meant that the people left playing heresy were much more likely to be the ones who believed 7th edition to be perfectly fine all along. They'd already been saying for years that 8th edition was terrible, so our project wasn't going to convince them. Anyway, while I'm not involved anymore, the project still continues, and I'd urge everyone to take a look if you're interested in that sort of thing. It's still run through the Heresy 30k forums, which require a sign-in to access. Maybe that wasn't the best idea from the start, really. Users like Darog have kept the game updated and then updated it again through to 9th edition. The rule set is pretty tight, the documents look great, and it's all available for free. Seriously, have a look, I'll link it below. And what about the Horus Heresy in general? Well, it's still there running on 7th edition, but, well, smaller than it used to be. There's still a decent sized community, enough to fill the bigger events, but the plastic starter sets have all gone, which adds another barrier to entry. The podcasts are still podcasting, but a lot of them have had to lean hard on the other 30k era game, Adeptus Titanicus, to generate some content. And the rules have continued to be released for the Age of Darkness rule set, but while I've read the books and kept up with the story, I haven't played the game since then, so I can't really comment. Generally, I think Heresy's been sidelined and moved to a niche game with occasional maintenance and support rather than a main concern, like Lord of the Rings, and I think that's a shame. I've said before that I think modern 40k lacks a good, narrative, simple way to play, and for many of us back in 7th edition, that's exactly what Heresy provided. Of course, look, there's a glimmer of hope on the horizon. This potential new 30k plastic set might reinvigorate interest, though from the dice in the photos it doesn't look like the rules are getting updated, and that's the biggest barrier to entry, for me anyway. Anyway, I'll be interested to see what they do with it. Though I've turned all my old Mark IV models into Red Scorpions now, I've still got a lot of Heresy era vehicles, Zimitar jet bikes and White Scars bits lying around that I really need an excuse to assemble. Maybe this will be it. Thanks for watching. Thanks for sticking with me through this trip down memory lane. I'll put links to the current Heresy 9th edition project below. In the meantime, check out my other videos just there on the right. And if you want occasional votes on what I make next, and I mean, well, that's it really. Wander over to the Patreon and donate to the Squat Fund. See you next time.